Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we are looking at Wasteland Prospects, released for Fallout New Vegas and created by Rage. The version I've been playing on is version 1.4, released on the 20th of March 2023, and you can check on the mod list Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Also, it's worth noting that as of making this video, the author is working on a list called The Badlands, which is supposedly a lot like this one, but uses the Tale of Two Wastelands mod to combine Fallout 3 with it as well, so keep an eye out for that one. Anyway, what is Wasteland Prospects? The description reads, Explore Nevada all over again, with a new and invigorating look at the wasteland. Explore new areas, meet new friends, and take on challenging enemies. And there's a new look to New Vegas, with an ever-growing list of graphical adjustments and improvements. You can experience classic weapons, with completely fresh and new animations, and discover new weapons and equipment. Wasteland Prospects is available to download from the Wabberjack mod list installer, and it comes with a handy install guide on the list zone webpage. Also, you can follow along with my Wabberjack explanation guide video on my channel in linked below. With over 200 mods, this list takes about 40 gigabytes to download, and once installed, there's an optional graphics mod which you can add yourself, which I'll talk about in a second, but if you want to get playing straight away, you certainly can. New Vegas not only released in 2010, but it was also kind of dated even back then, so to see the game now look like this is pretty remarkable. A large part of the modern look comes from the optional New Vegas Reloaded mod, which overhauls the graphics engine to improve colour correction, anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, and a bunch more, and it works as a great alternative to using an EMB, which not only costs more performance, but have a bunch of issues when running on New Vegas's janky engine. When you first boot up the game with New Vegas Reloaded, it'll look like this, which might be to your preference, but for me there was too many screen effects like bloom and chromatic aberration, a setting that's the bane of my existence. So if you feel the same way, you can open up the menu and tweak a bunch of settings. So for example, I turned off a few effects and lowered the gamma to best suit my preference. Moving on, the textures have been overhauled with NMC's Texture Pack and Legacy Reborn, providing higher quality textures that fit naturally with New Vegas aesthetic, and they're paired with a ton of other mods, updating textures and models for smaller items, gear, and NPCs. Then there's the Atmospheres mod, which improves weather and lighting to feel far more natural and have more variety, while sticking to what's realistic for the Mojave Desert. And finally, there's the bugs in performance, and this list turns the game from a stuttering mess to something that actually runs incredibly smooth, there's obviously still some limitations with the engine, like pop-in and some dodgy looking shadows, but overall the game plays far better. At above 60 FPS, I didn't experience any crashes, micro stutters, and all the usual jank of the base game. So yeah, I imagine most people will be able to run this. And you can even ignore New Vegas Reloaded if you really need to squeeze out performance. As I did notice in a couple areas my FPS would drop to like 40, but it's just one of those things that are unavoidable because, again, the New Vegas engine is just so janky. The gameplay leans on the hardcore mode for New Vegas. Well, it does more than just lean on it, it's on by default. So yeah, much of this list is focused around hardcore and survival, although there's a ton of balance changes, so things don't feel unfair. And much of these balances comes from the J. Sawyer Ultimate Edition mod. If you've modded New Vegas in the past, then you've probably heard of it. But to give a quick TLDR, a guy named Joshua Sawyer was the lead designer and project director for Fallout New Vegas, and he made a large mod which rebalances many aspects of the game, and it's all stuff that supposedly never made it into the final cut. And the Ultimate Edition of this mod is basically a community version with a bunch of bug fixes. Anyway, this mod adjusts so much that I couldn't possibly talk about it all. Like, these are all the changes here. So yeah, I'll just bullet point a couple of notable features. The level cap is reduced from 50 to 35, and the amount of XP required to level up is increased by 33%. Carry weight is significantly lowered, plus your base health is also lower, and the health gained per point of endurance is reduced. 
various perks have had their requirements and effects tweaked, and a huge list of weapons, armour, and general items have had their stats adjusted for better balance. As for other gameplay mods, the Just Assorted collection adds a bunch of modern game fixes you can toggle on and off, like hit markers, sprinting, dynamic crosshair, holding your breath when looking down the scope, and so on. And the remaining mods focus on making the wasteland more deadly, such as Heatstroke, which makes the desert sun gradually dehydrate you over time, and it'll speed up and down depending on your armour. And finally, there's Vicious Wastes, which I'll cover more in the next section, but in general it slows levelling, makes loot more scarce, ups the deadliness of radiation, and makes survival and medicine skills more important. The combat is far more deadly, but feels far more modernised compared to the stiff shooting of vanilla. Continuing on with the Vicious Wastes mod, damage dealt and received is a lot more unforgiving, and your limbs will break much easier. Plus enemies will use suppressing fire more often, and swap to long range weapons at far distances. Moving on, Bleed Out adds a bleeding and bandage system, where damage wounds have a chance to cause bleeding, which you'll need to patch up with bandages, or use trauma kits before you bleed out. Plus there's the Realistic Weapon Overheating mod, which makes continuous shooting overheat the weapon so it degrades quicker. And finally, there's a plethora of weapon and armour tweaks made with the J Sawyer mod, but again there's just so many changes that I can't list them all, but they're all along the lines of the Plasma Caster has increased projectile speed, and so on. New quest mods have been included, although the list goes for quality over quantity. For example, there's now an actual courier delivery service, which you can work for and earn some caps on the side. There's also a world of less pain, which adds a bunch of small locations across the desert, some of which being empty, and some coming with new NPCs with small little quests. And on the larger side of things, there's Autumn Leaves, which adds a huge DLC sized quest line, with well voiced dialogue, new music, multiple endings, and more, all of which fitting into New Vegas' aesthetic. Then looking at vanilla quests, the Truce mod adds new endings where different factions can work together, so you don't have to fully commit to a single one. And moving on, a huge focus has been made on improving the world itself. You can see here the list of mods which add to the landscape, and honestly at first I was pretty wary, as I love the feel of the Mojave Desert, and I was worried that all these mods would make it lose its charm. But I was pleasantly surprised, as all these new additions add extra flavouring rather than overcrowding the desert. As an example, mods such as Uncut Wasteland, Vice, and Enhanced Landscapes add loads of subtle details to almost every location, ranging from rusted broken down cars, abandoned shacks, and even some large crumbling buildings. And the lively series of mods aims to fill out many of the towns to feel more lived in, and makes it far more convincing that the bombs were dropped 200 years ago. The main thing is that I was able to wander around and not be distracted by out of place objects, so yeah, it still feels like New Vegas' map, but just less barren. Finally, new player homes are included, all of which are of very high quality, although some are rather prestigious for the post apocalypse, especially Casa de New Vegas, which even has options to invite guests over for a party. A ton of new weapons can be found in the Mojave, many of which coming from the original isometric Fallout games. We've got modern firearms, plasma guns, powerful sniper rifles, the whole shebang. Plus there's bows, which, you know, is always great in a post-apocalyptic setting. And as for wearables, much of the new gear is focused around wasteland survival, so there's backpacks for increased carry weight, new gas masks, and radiation suits on top of some more classic Mad Max looking armours. It's also worth noting that some of the quest mods add new items to find, and the J Sawyer mod adds expired and homemade stim pack variants. Weapon sounds have all been overhauled to be far more realistic, using a mod called All Weapon Sounds Overhaul Modern Edition. Boy that's a mouthful and the project Realistic Footsteps improve the sounds of wandering the wasteland. There's also the Brave New World mod, which revoices 145 NPCs, as the vanilla game reuses the same voices and voice lines a whole lot. Have a listen for yourself. 
Howdy. What can I do for you? Bye. She hasn't paid me anything yet. Should I be worried? Between you and me, I don't think she studied at an accredited institution. For some other notable things of this list, the alternate repairing mod lets you craft and buy new scrap parts for repairing your items. And it pairs nicely with handcraft, which allows you to craft some small and simple items when on the go. The game's intro is sped up with the better character creation mod, which skips the test with Doc Mitchell and provides you with quicker menus. The UI is overhauled to provide more on-screen info and categorise items in your inventory. Plus it works with ultra wide without using any tweaks, so that's a very nice change. Animations and general weapon handling feels way better, with a plethora of animation and movement mods. Although I did notice when walking, that sometimes my character would keep moving for a brief second after taking my hand off the keyboard. More raiders and NPCs patrol the Mojave. And finally, there's new companions to join you on your adventures, including six new dog followers. And like, what else could you ask for? What's impressive about Wasteland Prospects is that it overhauls New Vegas, but manages to stay under that line of adding too many mods. Like, while it still would be best to play a vanilla list for your first New Vegas experience, a new player could still get the hang of this list despite all it adds. All the changes feel completely natural, and when I swapped back to vanilla, it was like damn the gameplay feels so stiff and unbalanced in comparison. Although this list is much easier to recommend to those who wish to replay New Vegas with a fresh new experience. Even outside of the new quests, there's just a ton more to explore and more people to talk to, and it definitely provides a breath of fresh air for returning players. You also have to take things slower and be prepared for the increased difficulty. But I say this all the time and I'll say it again, Fallout games play best when they focus on survival. It's a post-apocalyptic desert with raiders and mutants roaming around, so yeah, it should be difficult trying to survive. Anyway. If you're wanting to experience New Vegas with modernised gameplay, updated graphics, and new well-made content, then Wasteland Prospects is the list for you. Oh, and as one last note, it's worth remembering that this is a heavily modded list that's also very stable, and with New Vegas that's a big accomplishment all by itself. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow, and I have a Discord where we talk about modding stuff or anything else. And other than that, thank you to my Patreon supporters, Biggie Boss, Tyler Pullin, Janice, Jake Carlo, Weasel Pea Pants, Rook, Alec Bentley, Jack Ma, and Christian Hell. Thank you so much. These donations drive me to make more content, definitely, because, um, like, I don't do this as a job. But when I work ages on a video, and then put it on YouTube, and YouTube gives me back a few pound coins, it's always a bit like, uh, thanks, I guess. And so yeah, these contributions really, really help me. Thank you. And I also have a coffee account if you want to give a little one-time donation. But uh, thank you everyone, and farewell.